Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Rolene Marks. As always, this is the Israel Brief brought to you by Lay of the Land, where we take a look at your top stories making headlines every Monday to Thursday. And we continue with our coverage of Israel's war against Hamas, or Operation Swords of Iron, as it is known uh, here in Israel. So last night we had some really, really good news, news that we've all been waiting for, and that was the IDF, during its ground incursions, had managed to free one of the hostages, a, uh, a young female soldier, 18-year-old Ari Megdish, was freed by IDF forces and uh, after being debriefed and examined she was found to be in good mental health and good physical health. Now of course the IDF will not elaborate how she was found, you know, what happened during the operation. Of course we understand this is a very, very sensitive information but she is uh, happily reunited with her family and uh, Israelis across the country celebrated. And as the IDF reiterated, we want every single one of our now 240 confirmed hostages to be released and brought home safely. Along with the hostages that were taken on the 7th of October, Hamas is holding two Israeli civilians, Avera Mengistu and Hisham al-Sayed. We want them returned as well, as well as the remains of fallen soldiers, Hadar Golden and Oron Shaul. So scenes of great jubilation across the country. I don't think there was a dry eye uh, anywhere uh, in, in the house as we saw images of Ori being reunited with her her grandmother who was just as, as you could well imagine I mean I'm even tearing up just talking about it but earlier today the Israeli uh, uh, head spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari in his morning briefing confirmed that there are now 240 uh, known confirmed hostages and yesterday as well, Hamas released a video of three hostages. Uh, obviously, you could see that uh, they were under great duress. And during their minute-long video, they castigated Prime Minister Netanyahu. Now, I won't talk more about this video. Suffice to say that this was Hamas's psychological warfare waged against the Israeli government and the Israeli people. And uh, we will not pander to, to them wanting this kind of coverage and will not discuss it any further. Sadly, yesterday it wasn't all news that we wanted to hear. Many of you are familiar with the images of a young tattoo artist who was at the peace rave at uh, Kibbutz Re'em, Shani Luk. The horrific images of her unconscious body on the back of a truck with her legs broken, being kicked and spat on by Hamas terrorists. Uh, it has now been confirmed that Shani was killed on the uh, 7th of October. She was murdered. And our president, President Herzog, in an interview with Die Bild, confirmed that she had in fact been beheaded. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz took to X and tweeted out that Hamas are terrorists. This is the, the level of depravity, the level of barbarism that they're willing to engage with and that they must be destroyed. Our thoughts and our prayers are with the Luke family as well as all of the families, friends, loved ones of the victims and the hostages of October the 7th. Addressing the UN Security Council's emergency session on Gaza, of course there's an emergency session of Gaza, we were still uh, waiting for that emergency session on the Hamas massacre that took place, but I guess we're going to be waiting for a long time. Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, Gilad Erdan, in an impassioned speech, spoke about how the Hamas terrorists are the Einsatzgruppen of Iran. The Einsatzgruppen were those German units that went across Europe during the Holocaust and systematically murdered, took Jews out to killing pits and murdered and slaughtered them in the most brutal way. He also said that the world seems to not understand that we are dealing with the mirror of the Nazis. 
he then and his delegation put on yellow stars, the stars that were a, a familiar sign during the Holocaust, which othered Jews and uh, uh, signed them out for persecution. He put those on and he said, we're going to wear this until you realize, until you wake up and understand what we are dealing with. Now, successive Israelis at the UN, as well as in the media, have warned the world it is not just Israel that is facing or squaring down this enemy. It is the whole of civilization. And uh, many are starting to, to wake up to the fact that Israel is on the front line fighting in the war for humanity. Meanwhile, the IDF is still engaged in very, very heavy clashes in the Gaza Strip. We've had an update just moments ago that there is ferocious fighting in parts of the Strip. Now, if we look at a map of the Gaza Strip, and I don't have one available, but it's a very thin patch of land, what the IDF have managed to do is almost seal off the north where there is a high concentration of Hamas terrorists and, and tunnels and are fighting there. This is why the idea for three weeks has been appealing to the civilians in Gaza to move south, move to the safer areas. Now what is extraordinary is that in an interview with RT, a Hamas official, when asked why don't you provide shelters for your people, he said that's not our problem. We have tunnels for, uh, for the Hamas people but the civilians are the problem of the United Nations. So there you have it. it, it it's not something that Israel just says, it's something that comes from the mouth of Hamas. And on the subject of civilians in Gaza, Israel let in another 80 humanitarian aid trucks today. Now, Israel's agreement with Egypt and our partners working on that humanitarian aid is that we inspect what is coming through. It is not uncommon for Hamas to smuggle in uh, parts to put together of weapons, of vehicles, or whatever they use to launch their attacks on Israel. The other danger is that Hamas take the aid for themselves and do not distribute it amongst people in Gaza who are needy. But uh, the amount of aid trucks has significantly increased in the last day or so. So just to reiterate, food is entering Gaza, humanitarian aid is entering Gaza, the water is on in the south of Gaza where the highest concentration of civilians are, the electricity is on in the south of Gaza, the internet is on in the south of of Gaza. We have had Gazans reporting out, so everything is working there, and uh, Israel is fulfilling its obligations under uh, the laws of armed conflict to mitigate civilian uh, casualties. We know that Hamas want as many civilians to die as possible because they want to win the, the battle for public opinion. Before you just believe what Hamas say, consider that these are master manipulators and this is how they work. Meanwhile, Israel has intercepted several projectiles, one UAV coming in earlier today and um, several rockets fired towards a light coming from uh, Yemen. Houthi rebels, also an Iranian-sponsored proxy, have claimed responsibility for that. We've also seen a significant amount of uh, fire on our northern border as well. Israel has uh, planned and prepared for any kind of war that opens up on multiple fronts. And uh, finally, I just want to take a, a moment to pay tribute to uh, a, an unsung group of people, and those are our first responders. I had the privilege of interviewing Arya Myers, a spokesperson from Magina David Adom earlier today. He's a paramedic who spoke to me about uh, his experience and the experience of Magin David Adom paramedics on the 7th of October. Magin David Adom lost three of their paramedics. And the stories are of exceptional, exceptional grace under fire. Paramedics being shot at, three of them murdered. Uh, having to do triage, use people's homes as makeshift clinics, uh, working under the most horrific, horrific circumstances, being witness to the most unbelievable atrocities that, that uh, you, you could ever imagine. And he, when I said to him, Arie, you know, what about looking after your emotional health and your mental health? He said, you know, we, we debrief, he says, but the people we really, really have to... 
uh, holding our heart are those um, uh, dispatchers who dispatch all the calls. He says, nothing prepares you for the call that comes in from an eight-year-old child whose parents have been murdered in front of them. Uh, and nothing prepares you to direct that child to take them, them and their siblings in, and hide in a cupboard uh, while shots fire out around them and you can hear those shots. He says the, the calls coming in were particularly, particularly uh, distressing and it's our dispatches that you really, really have to, to feel for. for. So for all those working as uh, call dispatchers who were working on the 7th of October, we owe you a, a debt of gratitude that we can never, ever repay. And we just hold you in our hearts for the exceptional work, the exceptional work that you did trying to save as many lives as you possibly could under incredible duress on the 7th of October. So those are your top stories making headlines. Don't forget to check out all our coverage of Israel's war against Hamas on our website at www.layoftheland.online. That's layoftheland.online. I have an article up today all about Israel's incredibly courageous policewomen, many of them filling in uh, on the front lines for their men while they called up to reserve duty. Our YouTube, as always, is at The Israel Brief. If you like our content, please click on the subscribe button. Don't forget to share it as far and wide as possible. Let's get Israel's story out to the world. Our YouTube, uh, I just told you about the YouTube channel. So, so much information in the head. Our uh, Facebook page is at Lottle site. Welcome to all our new community members. And we are on X at Love the Land 5. I'm Raleen Marks. This is the Israel Brief and we'll check in with each other tomorrow. Take care.